Right guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another video. In this one I've just got a bit of a paint project for you. So, let's go ahead, let's crack on with it. Right, so here's the next project. Now we're going to do a paint, a repaint on this frame. This just happens to be aluminium frame with a carbon bladed fork. See the fork steerer is still aluminium, but it's just bladed forks, carbon, fibre. So what I'll do, I'll finish stripping the parts off like your bottle cage, mounts, bolts, mudguard bolts if you have any. Now I'll take the stem off. I'll leave the seat post in there in the clamp for now, just because it's easy to clamp up like this if you have to. Right, so remove the fork as you can see. Now you have to remove, just take your bearings off, your fork and out of your top of your head tube there. So you take them out, then obviously what you have to do is make sure you degreased and got rid of any dirt that's on any of the parts. Like you see around there, all the dirt and grime is there from use. So you make sure that's all cleaned up because you don't want to contaminate anything with grease while you're doing any of the process. So it's better to clean it all up, degrease it all first before you start doing anything else. So you just wet your sandpaper, like so. Just keep rubbing away at it. Until you see either a primer colour coming through underneath. You might see a primer colour coming through after you've gone through the actual initial paint colour. But just keep your eye on it. You can wipe it off with your cloth. Obviously you see it's dulled the paint down. But we just keep rubbing at it. until it takes the, uh, the colour off. Right, so you can see the progress so far. All you want to do is, you can keep just refresh your water with some clean water after a while. And also, remember, just use small bits of sandpaper, like so, size so of your hand, and keep changing them quite regularly, because obviously they wear down quite fast and therefore you're not getting the most out of the paper if you're wearing the grit away, obviously it's getting finer and finer as you go. So to get the most out of it, initially, you want a nice fresh piece of paper. And it's literally a case of rubbing it until you start to get rid of the paint. Like so, you can see carbon fibre there, so obviously it doesn't need any more there. Carbon's just showing through. So it's just a case of going round and rubbing it until you get rid of the paint and any any um, decals that was on there or anything like that. Right, so there's the forks rubbed down now, back to the bare carbon. So I'll put them to one side and we move on to the frame. This is aluminium frame, like I said, as you can hear. Now, um, being as it's aluminium, you can obviously, you could get it blasted, but I don't recommend having that done um, because it can damage the actual surface of the, the metal itself and make it rough finish, so you don't want to do that. You can easily, if, you, if you've if got nice paint on your frame and you just want to flat it down with some 800 sandpaper or something just to, just to dull it down, and if you just want to do a quick repaint, then you can repaint over it if there's no, if there's nothing physically wrong with it. But the best way to do it, if you want to get, is get rid of all the old paint and start from a fresh bare aluminium. So what I'll do is, I'm going to paint strip this particular frame. Right, so with this paint stripper, obviously, you're not going to mess about with it when it's got signs like that on the on the bottle. So. What you want is some thick gloves, like these, heavyweight latex gloves that you can get. Or your dish, uh, what you do your dishes with. If you've got dish gloves, same same thing. You can get them from your, probably from your local supermarket or DIY place. But they're thick, they're not just the normal thin latex gloves. So you want a pair of those, at least. 
and then if you're doing anywhere inside with no ventilation much then you want a, a mask to put on I recommend just wear it outside as well and then just get some safety glasses on as well and obviously long sleeves and to wear some old clothes as well just in case you splash splash it on your clothes you don't want it burning on your clothes um, it might damage your clothes so put some old overalls on or old clothes is the best thing to do right so here we have the progress so far with the paint stripping now the best way to do this you'll find is there's no point in painting the paint stripper all over the whole frame and trying to do it like that you've got to concentrate on a particular tube at one time so like your head tube area do that get that done and then work your way down your down tube or your top tube because if you don't you're not going to remove it it's going to take longer because you're not concentrating the actual paint stripper on a particular area and what you can do is if you're doing it outside which is the best way to do it really just to say the mess indoors um, you just paint the paint stripper on there just leave it then for about five minutes ten minutes maximum and then what you want to do is get yourself a plastic uh, scraper obviously nothing metal or metal because it will damage the aluminium easily just want a plastic scraper and literally put it on just do an area you could do the whole down tube and then once it's been on there for literally five minutes probably then you can get the plastic scraper and just scrape away at it and then once you scraped it off just literally get your brush out again and paint another coat on there and leave it because it works best by scratching it up and doing it a bit at a time so the paint stripper can get in underneath the next layer of paint what is what will happen is if it's lacquered it depends on what finish you've got some finishes a bit easier to remove than others if you've got a freshly painted bike that hasn't been painted not long ago with normal spray paint then it'll take it off a lot quicker but if you've got a hard finish a proper finish with lacquer on it and everything and even powder coat it wouldn't even touch powder coating but if it's a proper finish that's been sprayed in an oven and then baked on then it'd be harder to remove but once you get it going and it gets in under the paint then it does come off but what you've got to do is concentrate it on an area at one time don't just paint the whole frame because you're wasting your time it'll take a long time to get off as you see there how it comes off if you just paint it on and do nothing then it will look something like that because it barely eats through the lacquer you've got to actually agitate it but like I say you don't want to use nothing metal or anything like that or wire brush because you're scratching up the aluminium so but that's how it looks after probably about four or five coats now on that down tube so here's the frame it's been fully stripped paint strip of the whole thing there's no, no paint left on it whatsoever so what I'll do now is I'll mask up where the bottom bracket's going to go so no paint gets in the threads on there same with the head tube mask up where the bearings are going to sit stop any paint getting inside there and say where your bowl cage is mount on just to stop the paint getting into the threads but that's how it turned out so completely stripped and then once I've masked it up, it'll be ready for a primer. Right, so there's the primer smoothed down. So you want, the, you want it smooth so it feels like glass to the touch. Because the more preparation you do on the, on the actual base, the primer, then obviously it will show through on the top coat. So the better you get the, uh, the primer on there, the better the top coat and the finish is going to be. So what I've done now, just put some masking tape in there as you can see in the holes again and then I'm ready to shoot the next colour on it right so here you see the frame now so it's primed up and what I've done is where the stickers are going to go your name the frame is going to go on there the decals what I've done is apply some white there and on the front of the head tube just to put the stickers on and then apply them 
in the desired position and then leave them on there so when the frame is painted in the colour we'll peel them off later on and they'll just leave the white name and the head tube logo on there as well like that so that's all flattened off ready to put the transfers on so you want it literally smooth as glass finish on it before you put any paint on it because the painting is the easiest part there's nothing to paint in them it's in the quality of the preparation is the quality of the paint finish in the end so the painting is the easiest part Right, so there's the decal applied. So make sure that it is on there all the way around the edges. Then we can paint over it. Right, so the frames had a chance to dry now. So what I'll do is the sticker's still on there, as you can see. So what I'll do, we get a scalpel. I'll just pick off the lettering. They reveal the colour underneath. So simple case of just flicking it up without obviously damaging the paint in the process. Remember the stickers are usually thick enough just to be able to nick the edge of them and just pick them up and then peel them off by hand. Just flick a corner up like that and you can get hold of it. Just carefully pull it off. Like so. Now when you pull these off, you might feel a slight edge on there. Obviously where the paint's just met the edge of the sticker. So all we do then is we just get some worn out um, thousand paper and just lightly sand over it wet, obviously using it wet, sand over that just to get rid of that edge and make it so you can't feel anything there. Obviously you don't want to rub too hard because you don't want to rub through the colour and go through to the primer. So just want to sand it over nice and light keeping the paper wet so I'll just go ahead I'll pick off the rest of these so there you have the letter in like I said just flat over that so you don't feel any edges on it at all and we got the logo on the head tube there you can see so the last stage is flat over the frame with some thousand paper again wet completely flat the frame down so as it takes the shine off it and then the frames obviously what we got to do then is lacquer it up Right, so there we have the frame. That's all been lacquered now. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and show you at the end. Uh, I'll run through the products I used at the end of the video, just in case you're wondering what I was actually using. But that's the frame all lacquered up now. So what I'll do is remove the masking out of the seat tube, the head tube, and bottom bracket. And then uh, it's ready to, um, once it's dried like it has, I've left it for 48 hours to dry just to be on the safe side and then what I'll do now is just give it a polish up by hand just to make it that bit that bit better as you can see nothing wrong with it as it is but what I'll do like I said is just remove the masking tape right so here we have the fork now what I've done is 
So you can see they are masked up round where the bearing's going to sit on the top of the fork there. So you mask around there. What you want to use for that is just some low tack masking tape because then you can easily get the tape off again. It doesn't leave sticky residue after you pull the tape off. So before we put any uh, paint on, like the first layer of primer, just to see what it's like, see if we've got to do any more um, flatting or any, see where there's any spots that need attention. We just uh, wipe it over the fork with some um, pre-panel wipe. So just wipe, put it on one rag first and then put that on. This just gets rid of any silicone, old silicone or anything that could be on the, the item. As you can see it evaporates really quick. So you want to thoroughly do it with this. I'll do it a few times with a couple of different cloths just to make sure you don't want any reaction with anything that could be on there because silicon's in the air you don't want to be spraying them anywhere near where you're going to have this because it could float in the air and land on here and you can't see it um, and then when you go and spray it it'll react with it so you want to make sure you've thoroughly cleaned it up first before you go ahead and then what we do is we'll get some uh, grey primer on it in a minute just put a light coat on right so there's the first coat of primer on it so wait for that to harden up and then we can flat, lightly flatten that down you see there I'll just put some uh, old uh, bolts in there because this fork has a couple of holes for mud guards to be attached so I'll just block them off stop the threads getting full of paint right so that's had some time to dry now so what I'll do is I'll get some thousand paper I'll use this wet with a little bit of um, soap and then I'll go over and smooth this down because it might look okay but it's rough to the touch so I'll smooth that all over get rid of all them rough texture right so there's the first shot of colour on the fork itself just light coat for the first coat now it's gone hard I can uh, flat that down ready for the second coat right so here we have the fork it's been lacquered now so what we did we gave it another shot of uh, red and then flatted it down with a thousand paper and then after that what we did was lacquered it as you can see so what you want to do is you can get yourself a piece of wire or a, or a cable tie and then tape it round in place round the steerer tube and then you can use that as a hook so you can put a bit of wire through there make a hook and hang it up while it's drying or for hanging it up to paint it that way you can paint it all round and you don't have to hold on to it and then when it's drying you can just hang it on a hook like that and then it'll dry without touching it so you can leave it for a couple of days to harden off so we just remove all this masking now off of here and we just polish that up that'll be the fork done and the frame right so first of all we use a paint stripper because it's aluminium frame so we paint strip the frame with that we use a paint brush and a pot and then a bucket of water to wash it off with so we use very um, did various coats of that bit sections at a time so that was the actual paint stripper obviously you need the protection on when you're using this like your gloves you want the thick heavier duty gloves like that like your dishwashing gloves you can get are adequate enough not the not the latex ones like these they're too thin then you want a face mask and some uh, goggles on and wear some old clothes for the paint stripper because it can be a messy process so once we had uh, done that on the frame obviously that was aluminium frame you never paint strip a carbon frame then we rub the forks down by hand so we use like a 400 grit wet and dry paper to start with and a bucket of water and done them wet and just rubbed it down so you want to use the lightest paper you can get away with you don't want to go really heavy on the grit of the paper 
because it might scratch it too much into the carbon fibre if you accidentally go through and you put too heavy a scratch marks in it so you want to use the finest you can get away with so you want to start like a 400 grit on that so once we rubbed it all down see the masking um, to mask up like the frame where the bearings sit and everything we used to, you can get various different two inch or one inch widths of masking tape so you want a low tack masking tape like these so it doesn't stick when you pull it off it doesn't leave any sticky residue or anything like that you can just peel it off easily it just comes straight off that's what you want to use for any painting not your normal masking tape when you pull that normal masking tape off it leaves all the sticky residue everywhere so you want some low tack tape for that and then obviously we used some we had some scissors we had a craft knife you want a very sharp craft knife to do anything with for cutting so um, once we've done all that when we wipe the frame down we was just using some uh, pre-wipe degreaser some panel wipe it evaporates really quickly get a couple of nice clean cloths wipe all the frame all over and the fork to make sure there isn't isn't contamination on it because in the air you don't want to be using any products near where you're painting anything so any silicon sprays or anything like that because it go in the air and it land on the frame or the fork and then when you put the paint on after after you sprayed it you'll notice some little bubbles underneath the paint things like that with the where it's reacted with against a silicon spray so anything you don't want to be using any polishes or silicons anywhere near where you're painting so make sure you clean the frame with some, like I said, some pre-panel wipe. Wipe it all over the bare frame and the fork before you put some uh, primer on. Now we just use grey primer on it. Nothing special, just some grey primer. Just stick with one make. So if you're going to use the primer, whatever brand you use, just stick with that. And then get yourself a couple of tins of grey primer. And then like I so said, when I was... Um, putting a coat on then when it when it had fully dried then I was flattening it down with some uh, with the wet and dry paper again a thousand grit paper some worn a thousand grit paper so got a bucket of water and I was just rubbing it down keep wetting the paper and rubbing the frame down very lightly you're just hardly even rubbing it you're just taking off any grit any you can feel the surface it should be feel like glass so if it doesn't then you can just smooth it over lightly with that wet and dry and then you just dry it off with a clean cloth afterwards just wipe it off the frame with a clean cloth again so you want plenty of cloths as well a good handful of those or more and so to do the whole project with or some old t-shirts or something like that save your t-shirts so once we got it all primed up and it was all smoothed down then we're using the same make of paint that we use for the primer for the actual paint colour itself so you're using the same brands of paint so you're not mixing and matching them so we use the red as you see there whatever colour you want to use and then we also use the same colour the same make for the white where the decals were we put the decals on sprayed it all I did was spray the areas where the decals were going to go white first and then put the decals out when it fully dried put the decals over the top the stickers and then when you go ahead and put on your paint colour just dust round wherever you got the stickers first and let that dry just put a light coat around just the edge of the stickers the decals first with the colour and just let that dry off first and then you go ahead and put the coats on the frame so once it was fully coated with the colour, then we rubbed it down again using thousand paper, bucket of water again, smooth the frame off, and then we do give it another second coat of red on over the whole frame, and same with the fork, and then we smoothed it all down again just to dull off the paint with thousand paper, and then we used the lacquer. Now the lacquer we used was a 2k lacquer you can see there this is harder wearing 
than the normal um, lacquer that you get, the 1K lacquer. Now with this, what you've got to do is you activate it by pulling out the bottom, as you see there. You pull that out the bottom, twist it and pull it out, and then it activates the hardener in with the actual lacquer. Then you should give it a shake for a couple of minutes, and then it's activated. So once it's activated, you've got sort of um, a time window to use it, otherwise the product goes off. So you have to use it um, within a few hours normally, otherwise it will set and it will be no good. So that's what we used on it. This is hard, hard to wear in the 2K lacquer against um, degreasers and things like that, or you know, just hard to wear and finish for the lacquer once it's fully dried. And once it's painted, then we just let it dry for at least 48 hours before we touch the frame at all. Make sure it's fully dry without touching the frame in between. And like I showed, all I did is you can just get a broomstick like that. You see there, I just put some masking tape on it to help it grip. And I put that up through the head uh, tube of the bike and just rested it on that to, to spray it so you weren't touching it. And what you can do with that is you can see it's just a broomstick. All I do with that is clamp it into your bike stand if you've got one. You can clamp that into your bike stand um, as you would normally clamp your seat post. Stay. Just clamp that in and then rest the head tube over there and it just holds the bike, holds the frame, sorry. And what you want to do is make sure when you're spraying always use a mask and obviously spray in a well ventilated area, preferably outside. And if you're going to spray outside, make sure the weather is nice, at least 20 degrees, something like that. Nice weather, there's no damp in the air and obviously if you're painting outside you don't want to paint on a windy day. You need a nice still day to do it with. So if you just want to do it in your back garden, then you can. Um, just be mindful of the weather. And like I said, leave plenty of time for the frame to dry outside before before you touch it. Don't be tempted to spray it and then go and try and pick it up after you've painted it. Allow plenty of time for it to dry off hard before you go and pick the frame off of the, the stand. And what I've done with the fork, as you see, all I've done was put some masking tape around it with some wire or a cable tie, and then you can just hang that up to paint that, and then you don't have to touch it. You can just grab the steerer tube to take it off and then hang it up inside, say in your garage or whatever. You can just hang it up on a, a piece of uh, wire with a hook, and you don't have to touch it then, and it can cure off. So that was some of the products I used, just in case you was wondering. Right, so I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, remember to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more cycle related content. Till next one, ride safe and I'll see you then.